Lee Carter, also known as Viper, is a rapper, real estate agent, scammer, drug addict, corset enthusiast, living meme, and alleged kidnapper. Viper was born in El Dorado, Arkansas, October 7th, 1971. While I could not find much in regards to his childhood, his youth as well as time being a young adult were riddled with drug addiction and gang violence. The start of Viper's music career was marked by a movie that he starred in called The Fifth Ward. Written and directed by his brother, Viper was asked to make some music for the soundtrack. Even after the movie was finished, Viper continued to produce music, and this is where things really get crazy. As I mentioned previously, Viper was involved in gang activity, admitting many times to his past selling drugs. Viper started out clean, just selling. But like so many before him, he eventually fell into being a user. Viper claims this began when he started sampling the drugs for quality control purposes. His addiction threw his music production into overdrive. Early in his career, Viper had an epiphany. More albums equals more fame. It didn't matter if he was reusing songs on multiple albums, or even reusing album covers. Viper was dead set on creating as many rap albums as possible, eventually creating what many regard as his magnum opus, Yule Cowards Don't Even Smoke Crack, which would remain generally unknown until 2013, when someone uploaded the album to YouTube. 2013 was a very different time for the internet, where humor like this was at its peak. Because of the name and album cover, it was already a meme. But after people heard the lyrics, it was set in stone. Viper would capitalize on this attention by creating even more albums. One year making an album every single day. From what I've been able to gather, he has released over 1,500 albums, and not all of them are in one genre of music. Many consider Viper to be the godfather of what is now known as cloud rap, and some even proclaim him the creator of Vaporwave. I attribute this to the sheer amount of albums he has created. Let me just read you guys the names of some of my favorite Viper albums. Yourself, man. Cops are jealous losers. The world. It ain't real. I bend the spoon with my mind. My Piano Cake, Hustlin' Thick, They Hate Me Cause I'm Vaporwave, Shed Skin, which I particularly love because of the album cover art, Thug Renditions, and this one is my personal favorite, E Boy, I'll kill ya, All I Need Is That Money. Over half of these albums are part of a trilogy. Yes, there is a I Bend the Spoon with My Mind too. don't worry. One of the only things I find funnier than his album names are some of the album covers. The cover to his famous album, Yol Cowards, is actually another album cover that has just been cropped up close. The original album is called Southwest Hooligan, and is far inferior to Yol Cowards in my opinion. Another thing that really gets me is Viper's unique music video style, and I will play many of these throughout this video. Viper's music, even though the majority of it was bad, elevated him beyond the level of your average street-level rapper. It is what drew everyone's attention to him. But as people looked into Viper more and more, they realized that stuff like Yol Cowards is the mere surface of his insanity. Lee's decades of recreational crack use have taken their toll on his mind. One doesn't simply make a rap album every day of the year for a whole year straight, unless they have some kind of chemical assistance. But it's not just the music, his psychosis will manifest in many different ways. One example being The Great Reset. Back in 2020, for months, Viper was going on and on about how the world was going to end in an event called The Great Reset, declaring that June 19th, 2027 would be the last day of humanity. I cannot stress to you how serious 
this viper was about his Nostradamus-like prediction. But belief in an impending doomsday has got nothing on what we're about to talk about. If you saw the title of this section of the video, you're probably asking yourself, what is a thawed? In technical terms, a thawed is simply a woman's corset, which Viper enthusiastically wears in his daily life. But Viper doesn't call them corsets, no. He calls them thawds, which stand for the Hordenance of Death. Truth be told, I have absolutely no idea what that means, but I do know the purpose behind why Viper does this. He claims the Thods absolve him of his sins and help him transcend evil. These are his words, not mine. Viper's struggle to wear more and more corsets in his daily life is well documented as the Thawed Wars. Viper could not just settle for wearing one corset. His sins were simply too great, so Viper would often double, sometimes even triple up on these things. It is well documented that this caused Viper extreme discomfort and sometimes even pain. His goal throughout this was to defeat one Thawed and add another. To defeat a woman's corset, all you have to do is be able to wear it around everywhere at all times. This becomes progressively harder as you add on more thoughts, and Viper would often falter, unable to take the increasing pressure of the corsets, being forced to take them off, starting over at what he called Life Plateau 1. Viper considered these corsets as an almost spiritual item. He felt pride in wearing multiple, and he felt shame in taking them off. Viper would describe the addition of these corsets as a life plateau or a life journey. Viper would reach his next life plateau with the addition of another corset. And in his mind, by taking these things off, despite the fact that they caused him pain, was the equivalent of starting his life journey back at zero. Three corsets equals life plateau slash life journey level three. No corsets equals life plateau level zero. I have run into multiple stories of Viper's daily life being complicated by his use of thoughts. One day while Viper was driving, the thawed caused him to go lightheaded, stating that he almost got into a nasty accident before pulling over and adjusting them. Another time that the Hordenance of Death really impacted Viper's life was during his real estate agent exam, where under the immense pressure of three thawds, he failed his exam. He was not shy about sharing the struggles and tribulations behind daily thawed usage. Viper's Twitter is a treasure trove of unhinged delusions and I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't read you just a couple of thawed tweets. What I'm about to read you will be a series of tweets in chronological order, detailing probably the most infamous of the thawed wars. Day zero, I have fallen back one day on my first journey. I mind to start day one tonight and add thawed in my sleep. Tomorrow, I will wake up day one dash J1. Translation. He had to take the corsets off because they hurt, and he's starting over. By sleeping with one on tonight, which I missed that previously, he sleeps with these things on all the time. When he says tomorrow I'll wake up day one J1, he means day one, life journey number one. D0 dash J2. Tonight, I go to bed with Thawd. A make my attempt to wear it 15 days straight. On 5-16, I order a third thawed in preparation for my final journey, J3I, and 2, a possible death. Translation. He's putting on his second thawed and he's gonna wear it 15 days straight before adding the third, which he says can result in possible death. Day 1-J2. It is time to be real. Thawd possesses a power that I have yet to control. When it hurts, I put it on my pelvis, and recently, I haven't worn it at night. Translation. That second Thawd is really chafing. Behavior like this is very typical from Viper during a Thawd war. But it is the next tweet that I'm about to read you that cements this Thawd war as the greatest. D2J2. I have a bad case of pneumonia. I feel like Darth Vader when his limbs were disemboweled. My resolve has never been greater. Long live the Sith. Through sheer dedication and force of will, he managed to wear the Hortonance of Death 
for so long that he caught pneumonia. Now, I'm not a doctor or anything, but putting massive pressure on your lungs and also smoking what Viper does is the perfect recipe for pneumonia. To summarize this section, a thawed is a woman's corset, or in Viper's words, the Hortonids of Death. It is a spiritual item that Viper uses to absolve himself of his sins, and it has caused medical issues. I think it's safe to say that Viper's love of Thawd is only rivaled by the title of our next section. The history of Viper perpetrating fraudulent behavior goes back quite a ways, but first I would like to describe the fan side of it. You see, Viper has a cult following. Before these allegations, they were pretty united in a general love for Viper's music. Some people out there claim if you listen to the right Viper albums, they're actually pretty good. Having such a devout fan base, Lee Carter decided to capitalize on it. He would sell just about anything under the sun to fans, leading to a very well-known meme in the community. 49 bucks, family. Viper will price almost everything at 49 bucks. 50 is simply too much. And anybody who messages Viper will quickly be referred to as family by him. I can't even count how many times he has told a fan that they're like his little non-biologic brother. And this is after knowing them for like five minutes. And I don't think Viper does this for the sake of the fans. Because it seems like more often than not, people will order albums or pieces of merch from Viper that they will never receive. When I was researching the Viper subreddit, which I will have linked down in the description below, excellent source of information, I came across numerous posts of people asking if they would ever receive their Viper merch. To a longtime fan of Viper, this is almost a laughable question. He has done this to so many people that it's almost expected at this point you will receive nothing. And when you do receive something, sometimes it's not even what you asked for. Viper would rip his vinyl album covers in half and sell the front and back separately. But don't worry, it's not too much. It's just $49, family. Despite all of this, Viper's cult following didn't care if they had been scammed. In a way, it added to the charm of the whole experience. This was a completely different story when Viper started scamming live shows. For years now, Viper has been doing live shows for his listeners, and many of them have gone off without a hitch. Viper will do a 30 to 45 minute set, disappear for a little while to uh, not be a coward, and then he comes back to chill with the fans. This was a big deal for a lot of people. He took a lot of pictures, signed a lot of albums, but then he just stopped showing up to them. Tickets were still being sold, Viper was still making money, but he would no longer show up to his scheduled live performances. Another notable scam that he tried to pull on his audience took place during the Houston Flood. Viper's entire family had evacuated, but he decided to stay behind. For what purpose, I'm sure you can draw your own conclusions, but Viper told the internet that him, as well as his whole family, were starving because of the flood. And if they could just buy some albums, it would really help them out. But if you think him ripping people off is just confined to his fans, you'd be dead wrong. Because we are about to get into what I consider to be his most interesting scam. That would be Free Movers LLC. Free Movers LLC is a company founded by Lee Carter. I've been told that its initial premise was to move people Lee was a real estate agent for for free. As I've stated previously, Viper actually is a certified real estate agent, or was at one point, and he had high hopes that this amenity would gather him a lot of business. What Free Movers became was far from what Viper had initially stated. This company would charge businesses that they hadn't even worked with. They would take money for jobs and not even show up. And when they did, it was somehow even worse. Lee's employees were described as dirty and smelling of alcohol, and all they had for equipment was a rusty truck. Despite all of these issues, Lee still tried to list the 
the company on the stock market, making claims of extreme growth potential, trying to create billions of shares right off the bat. He was of course denied and threatened to sue the United States Securities Exchange Commission for the crime of them not listing his fraudulent company. If you need further proof that Free Movers LLC is not legit, then take a look at their phone systems. You can call Free Movers LLC for hours and you will never get an answer. Just this voicemail recording of Viper. Hello, you've reached Free Movers Realty and freemovers.com where we help you find your new home or list your new home and move you to your new home absolutely free or at the guaranteed lowest price in town. Please leave your name, number, and message at the sound of tone, and we will contact you back shortly. Thank you for reaching out to Free Movers Realty and freemovers.com. Goodbye. From $49 albums that never show up to moving companies charging businesses they didn't even work for, Viper has a very interesting history of fraud. And like most other topics in this video, this is just merely scratching the surface. His history of fraud and criminal behavior goes back decades now, and it would be considered one of his worst attributes. At least that was until the recent allegations, which not only brought Viper to my attention, but to so many others as well. Before we get into the most recent allegations of kidnapping, I want to show you a series of texts that are now infamous in the Viper universe. A couple years ago, someone catfishing as a 17-year-old girl contacted Viper through text. I am going to read you a couple of snippets from this text chain. I'm sure I will have to censor some of it because it is extremely graphic, and I'm showing you this because I want you to know just what kind of morals Lee Carter has. Dear Viper, I'm your biggest fan. I just wanted to thank you for the inspiration you've given me. I've always wanted to see you live. If you ever do a concert, I will fly to it. Kelly. Thanks. What grade you in? What town you in? I am now going into my last year of high school. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Viper responds, Are you a girl? And if so, can you send a picture? Kelly sends the picture. OMG, you're adorable. Please don't tell me you have a boyfriend. Nope, I've never dated anyone. No one has ever inspired me enough. Lee responds, Are you a virgin? This goes back and forth for a while until Carter responds, I'd love to spend time with you too, and IDK make you very happy and very rich. In the meanwhile, let's make a pact to talk at least every other day and be boyfriend and girlfriend, but you can still go to prom, lol, so I don't lose you before it's time to set up your colleges. Deal? The catfishing troll then acts like the phone was snatched by this girl's father, and responds with a long, angry message proclaiming that his daughter is 17. Viper's response to this would go down as an infamous meme in the community. 17 is legal, pops. This was the only instance I was able to find evidence with, but I've heard rumors around the Viper community that this has happened more than once. But as I said previously, these are the past allegations. Let's get into the recent allegations, the reason most of you are here. On January 8th, 2024, news broke that Viper had been arrested for alleged kidnapping. In April of 2023, police had responded to a phone call at Viper's house. In the garage, they found a woman weighing about 70 pounds, a mattress covered in fresh vomit, and a makeshift toilet that didn't flush. The woman claimed that Viper had her locked up for the past five years. She stated that five years ago, she was homeless and pregnant. One day, while she was begging for money, Carter approached her in his vehicle, offering her a dollar. She claims he then offered her help, and when she got into his car, he took her home to his garage, where he kidnapped her. Keeping her there for the next five years, feeding her only chips and snack foods, forcing her to take drugs, and other horrible things that I cannot mention here. I say allegedly before all of this because the court case is still ongoing. And the crazy thing is, guys, that there is evidence to support that he is innocent 
and that he is guilty. I have my own theories on what happened, but I will save that till the end. First, I will read you some of the stuff I found that supports the theory he is guilty. First and foremost being a claim made by his neighbor. During a conversation with his neighbor, supposedly Viper made claims about where he kept women locked up pointing at the garage, stating that the women were ungrateful, always requesting more food and drugs. The neighbor claims he had long suspected human trafficking or some kind of adult video racket, but he said that he figured the police would come to investigate soon enough. Another piece of evidence would be the overwhelming amount of rap lyrics where Viper has alluded to this type of behavior. Granted, the man has made over 1,500 albums, so I'm sure he said all kinds of stuff along the way. Now I'm going to read you some details that allude towards something being a little bit off with the victim's story. I am not at all saying I don't believe what she said is true, but I feel like this wouldn't be a halfway decent video if I didn't at least include the facts that make this a little bit of a murky case. The first one I want to talk about is the length of time Viper has even owned that property. From what I've been able to gather, he hasn't owned this house more than two years, with his victim claiming that she was locked up for five. Viper could have of course moved her in that time, or her sense of time could be skewed from being locked in a garage for a whole year. Second would be the date that the call was made. This woman was found back in April of 2023. Viper wasn't arrested until January 2024, an extremely long period of time for a man who has allegedly committed these kinds of crimes to be roaming the streets. Then again, we could just chalk this up to red tape or bad police work. This next bit of information I find most fascinating, but at the same time, it has the most room for being a lie. You see, Viper has a wife and someone got in contact with this wife to see what she thought of the whole situation. She claimed that it was all fake, that Viper had known this woman for years, hell, they'd even had a kid together that was taken away by the state. She also claimed that this was not the first time this woman had called the police on Viper, and that apparently this whole dispute was over Viper not giving her drugs. Like I said, this has the most room to be a lie, but if Viper were somehow innocent, I would see this being the case. Drugs can make people absolutely insane. I mean, Viper is walking around in his daily life with three women's corsets on. It is not out of the realm of possibility that this could just be a dispute between drug addicts. Do I believe that to be the case? Sadly, no. I think something fishy and disturbing was going on there, but I don't think that we have the whole truth, at least not yet, because it seems like new stuff about this case and Viper is coming out all the time. A couple days after all the information about the alleged kidnapping had come out, another news story broke of a dead body being found in the very same house. Two months later, the body of a 61-year-old woman would be found in the very same garage that the woman had been rescued from. Police did an autopsy and ruled that this was not a homicide. The 61-year-old woman had died due to complications from alcohol abuse and hepatitis C, internal bleeding being the cause of death. In the wake of this news, people thought that the woman found dead in the garage was the kidnapping victim. Police made it clear that these were two very separate incidents and that the alleged victim of the kidnapping was in good health safe, with the dead body being completely unrelated to the kidnapping and ruled a natural death, Lee will not face any charges for it. But he is in an ongoing legal battle over the kidnapping case. Mr. Carter has pled not guilty, and the defense attorney put out a statement stating that Carter and the alleged victim were not only in a romantic relationship, but they also had a child together, that this was not a kidnapping just a simple domestic dispute. After doing all this research, 
I really don't know what to believe. Viper has proven in the past that he has the capacity to commit some absolutely heinous crimes. The messages with the catfish alone make him a not-so-good guy in my book. But then you add on the fraud, the drug use, the past gang violence. Even if Viper is innocent of this crime, he is not a good guy. Do I think exactly what the victim claimed happened happened? No. But do I also believe that something didn't happen? Hell no. We are talking about a man who wears woman's corsets to absolve him of his sins. Crazy people like this are really capable of anything. That's all I have on Viper today, guys. I cannot tell you how wild of a ride researching all this was. I probably haven't had to dig that deep into a video subject for a very long time. There are decades of albums, and instances far too many to cover here in one video. So I'm thinking once the trial is done and we know all the facts, we'll have to make a Viper Part 2 to go in depth on things like hops. But for now, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I know there weren't very many clips in here, and it's because whenever someone interviews Viper, he's actually normal for a change, or at least normal by his standards. A lot of the humor lies in the songs, and I highly recommend you guys to go check out a couple of them on YouTube. Don't worry, Viper does not profit off of them. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, especially till the end that really pushes it in the algorithm. A massive shout out to all my channel members. Love you guys. Thank you for all the support. This community would not be half as cool as it is without you guys. And to whoever's watching this video right now, I hope you have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, just go have a good time. And always, keep it kiwi.